Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and jump in. But first, I wanted to give a big thanks to Rosario. He was the first person I've had donate to the project, and I really appreciate his support. It's really helped me to uh, reboot my thinking as far as the project goes, and it's it's been hard to do some videos lately just because of everything that's going on in my life. And uh, this has helped me kind of pull back and, and, and look at the project and realize that it's it's important to a lot of people um, so I appreciate that uh, Rosario and I uh, just want to let you know that that I do take those donations seriously um, I feel it's my responsibility to give back to you as a community and to help you along and so hopefully if you have any comments or feedback please let me know because I want to make sure that that this is a you know I'm doing the game but I want you guys to be able to um, you know give some feedback and some input and uh, hopefully this becomes more of a group project Anyways, um, so what we were doing last time is we had created that uh, HUD object that we were going to use. It was a little selector. It's a circle with a button on it so we can rotate an object. And I have to say, when I was uh, the reason why I haven't done a video sooner is because I was a bit bummed out when I imported it into Shiva. It really looked really bad. I mean, it wasn't even. I I, I didn't want to show people what it looked like in the video because it looked so bad. So I did a little playing around. I was trying to figure out how um, everything could look so bad. And um, what I found is I went down to, I was just kind of, like I said, poking around. And I went to the textures and I noticed something. Uh, over on the description, you'll notice that all the textures are all multiples of 64. So we have 64 by 64, 256, 128. Well, the selector is at 128 by 128. Now the original selector that I did in GIMP uh, was something like 160 or so, I don't know. Anyways, what it was doing is um, it was scaling it to the next uh, appropriate size for the texture and that scaling really caused things to look crappy. So I just want to point that out. Um, when you're doing those textures and doing those images or HUD items or anything like that, um, you may want to do them in, in these nice even sizes so that we don't get the scaling and everything looks crappy. Um, let me run the game here and let me show you uh, what it looks like now. So disregard the black circle for now. That's something I'll explain a little bit later. But you'll see that it looks pretty close to what we had in GIMP. It looks um, pretty nice. It's what it was before is it was really jagged um, and it just looked really bad. So anyways, we have everything set to the proper uh, pixel size and it's working great. Um, so in GIMP, I just went in and resized the image and the resizing in GIMP uh, is a lot better than what's here in Shiva when you import. So it's going to look real nice. Okay, so let me show you how I got this working um, as far as the HUD goes though. So let's stop. Let's go over to the HUD editor. And what I did is I added another component. Now this component, um, and how I did that is I just went to right clicked on it, went to add component. And let's go in here and edit. I named it the selector. Um, the type is just a container. And then I set the visibility to false originally because I don't want it to show up when the game loads. Um, I kept the position in the center of the screen, so 50-50, and the origin at center because I, I want it to be right there in the, in the middle. And um, I kept the view, view, viewport aspect ratio independent so it looked nice and square and adjusted to nearest pixels. And then in the appearance, I went ahead and loaded the texture. Now how I got the texture in is I went to import, texture, and I just selected the texture. Here it's in a TGA file. It was a PNG before. I was just kind of seeing if, if it made a difference as far as the appearance. But it doesn't. So you can use either one. I selected it. Just kept everything the same and hit import. Um, that imported the texture. And then I was able to specify that as the back texture for this particular HUD component. Um, I changed the border color or the alpha all the way down because I didn't want the, the border to show up. And then you click OK. Now, that was all I needed to do to get the, the item into the HUD. And then I also added a selector button because uh, I'm going I'm to tie that in in the future to where if you put your finger or cursor in that circle, and, and like I said, it's not going to be visible. I just wanted to make sure it was showing up in the right spot. But that's where you're going to be able to manipulate this um, 
control and be able to rotate the object. So that's why I have the button there. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of the HUD. Yeah, let's go ahead and save. Let's reload the level. So the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out, okay, how are we going to get it so that it appears when we move over an object? Now there's lots of other stuff that we need to do, but for right now I'm just going to focus on getting it to show up when you move over an object. You'll notice that when you move away from the object, it still stays there. So that's one of the things we'll need to fix in the future. But uh, let me show you the code that I that I did to get this functionality. So let's go over to let's stop that. Go to code. Uh, go into on mouse move for the aim cam AI. And I had to add these variables at the top. We needed a handle to our scene and to our, a user. And then um, I added this if statement. So we're checking to make sure that we're in editing mode. Otherwise, we had all kinds of weird stuff happen. This wasn't there before. So and I'm going to go ahead and take this out as we talk about it. They were just there, so, so I knew what was going on. So I made sure that we check to see if we're in editing mode. If we are, and we already had this before, this is the part where we identify if um, we're moving an object. So let's come down here. So I created this entire else block. This else block is um, the code that puts the HUD object in place. And so what it does is it checks to see it's going to get the first hit collider. So we've used that before. It's basically just, just uh, using the cursor to find out if there's a movable object under the cursor. So that's what the rest of this code is. It just makes sure that there's a movable object. It's similar to what we did um, in the when we were creating the object and um, the ability to move it. And then if we decide that if, or we check if the object is truly movable, then what we're gonna do is send an event uh, to the aim cam, which is the object that we're in now. We're just sending an event back to itself. And we're gonna call this on move selector. We're gonna pass in the object um, that was under the cursor and that is right here and what this is going to do is it's going to move the the HUD selector to be right over the top of the object so again we get our handles to uh, like the user object and then also the selector um, since I named it selector when we do um, the value here is going to be HUD dot selector so this is where we, we get the handle to that. Um, now because we want it to be centered directly over the object that we had selected, we're going to pull in this selected object handle and we're going to call the object bounding sphere center. So that means that you know each object has a sphere that kind of is wrapped around the object. So if we get the center of that, then we're going to have the center of the of the object. Uh, and that's worked so far. I'm I'm wondering if there's some cases where that may not be entirely accurate but it's worked so far so we'll go with it um, so we're gonna get the XYZ values of that now here's where it gets tricky so the X Y and Z values are obviously in the three-dimensional world the camera is a two-dimensional space so we need to do some kind of conversion luckily Shiva has a nice um, function that'll do that for you so we call camera dot project point and we're going to make sure we know which camera we're talking about. In this case, it's the overhead camera because that's the one we use when we're looking down and doing editing. Then we're going to pass in the 3D coordinates, X, Y, and Z, that we got from the, the previous function. And that's going to return an X and a Y value that will, uh, from what I remember, um, I believe it's like uh, 1. Like the middle of the screen is 0, and then it goes negative 1 and 1. And then on you know going up and down it's one and negative one. Anyway, so it's the idea is that uh, it's kind of a, a value between zero and or negative one and one. So that doesn't really come in handy when we're trying to position the the HUD or components on the HUD because there you know if you remember that's we start in the bottom corner with zero and then it scales up to the the top right hand corner is 100 100. So it goes in percentages basically. So I have this function here, convert HUD coordinates. Now I'm going to go off the screen here for a second to pull this up, but all I'm doing is double clicking on it. And how I'm doing the conversion is I'm just taking 50 um, because the math on this, because the center of the, 
you know, when I said we're going from negative one to one, so the center of the screen is zero. And so I am going to convert everything based on the center of the screen. I know I'm not making a lot of sense here, but if we take 50 and then we take the X value times 50 and add it to that, then we're going to get um, numbers in the range from zero to 100 since X can go from negative one. So let's say that it's all the way over on the left-hand side of the screen, X would be negative one. So we take 50 plus negative one times 50, well, 50 plus a negative 50 is zero. And so on the HUD coordinates, that would be on the far left-hand of the screen. Um, and so this conversion works. Uh, you just plug in those numbers and it converts over to the HUD um, position. And so then we just take those HUD coordinates and we set the selector to be at those coordinates and then we turn it to be visible. So I know that's a, a lot of talking just to basically explain that we get the position and then we stick it in there. But, um, you know, there's quite a few conversions that have to occur for that to work. Um, and so that's how we get that functionality. That's that's the piece right there where when we come in here and run, go to the overhead view, when we move over an object, it sticks that, that HUD object, the selector, right over the center of the object that we have uh, moved over. Um, so now you'll notice that, like I said before, if we move off, then, then it stays there. But the one thing that I did want to make sure happened was that when we move the object, that the selector moves with it. And so, let's pause the game again, go back to the code. In order to do that, um, we had in the um, on mouse move in the aim cam, whenever we were in editing mode and we were moving an object, that's this code right here, we were sending an event over to the moving object in the movable AI to the on mouse move event, which is this. So I added this little block of code here in the bottom. It's pretty simple. Um, basically, we just get handles to the user, the selector, and then the aim cam. And then we just check to make sure that the selector is visible. So if the selector is visible, it means that it's you know currently active. So we want to move it with the object. So then we just send an event back to the aim cam, the on move selector, and then pass in the object. And we already went over that. That's this, this code right here that we just did. And so not only does that code put the, the, the HUD object, the selector, on top of the object when we first uh, mouse over it, but also as we move, it's going to go ahead. Um, moving the object is going to call that um, it's going to call that event so that it will continue to move with the object. So that's the basics of what we, we nailed down there. Um, Feel free to go check out the code on GitHub and, the co and uh, look at the game on the prototype over at my website. Um, go to subspacegames.com. Um, please leave comments on any of the blog postings. Go into the forums. Leave some comments down if you want to go read up on some of the stuff that's happening there. Um, also, feel free to leave comments in the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and um, we'll see you next time.